The Rebel Alliance Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron fighter, the Squix fighter, was one of the most feared starships in the arsenal of the Rebellion. On the table, a new series of Star Wars ships you may be very interested to see, as well as I am a Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron. Hey everyone, this is Dan, and thank you very much for watching Squirrel Stampede today as we introduce the new fall line of Micro Galaxy Squadron. I was a big fan of Star Wars Action Fleet in the 90s where they made ships and vehicles and small scale figures to place inside and this is a new continuation of that series, a modern take on one of my most favorite lines. I still have many of those ships and I will share some of those today as we go through, but we've got the Millennium Falcon, we've got the Razor Crest, we've got several interesting ships to look at and tiny micro figures. So it's gonna be really cool to see how this series performs. Let's get to this and go to war. A star. Squirrel, Squirrel Stampede. Stampede. Let's begin with the most iconic Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. Launch Edition Series 10015 from Jazzwares. And of course pictured next to my original 1995 Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. A ship I picked up in my third childhood. So far they're looking fairly close to scale with maybe the Micro Galaxy Squadron just a tad smaller. The Action minifigures are looking about the same though. Nice packaging look with these with a space battle behind on the card, but not contained in a full box like the original Action Fleet used to be. There on the back of the box, we've got a quick little image of the X-Wing and a few of the details. Of course, the S-Foils are going to unlock. R2 will possibly pop out landing gear, opening and closing cockpit with collect them all down below, plus chase vehicles, which we actually have one chase vehicle to share today. I am still trying to figure out how I chased that one down. Let's get the X-Wing out of pack. I'm so interested to see how this will compare. Out of package, definitely more intricate than ever. A little bit smaller than my old school scale of 95. You can see here, it's just hugged in a little bit tighter with some way better micro detail and paint. Right off the squirrel, one of the things that used to bother me about the original X-Wing action fleet was the gray cockpit. They always seem to picture it with a blue lined cockpit, but this one actually has one, or a light tone of steel gray, your color call. It really highlights the cockpit and brightens up the ship along with all the other nice red detailing and a little bit of yellow too there. It is really battle scarred up. It is muddy and dirty and electrical. So we have two micro figures here, Luke Skywalker and R2-D2. The micro scale figure, always fun, almost like miniature action figures in this little micro pack this time. Let's see if we could pop these guys out. There's Luke and of course R2-D2. So there is Luke, Rebel Pilot, don't tell Barbie. Look at this, this is a great little micro figure with some articulated sit and articulated reach. This is pretty nicely scaled. And of course R2 is also here. Nice little shiny dome on top with a little bit of blue paint here and there. So can we load up these two characters inside? How does this cockpit open up? Hinged up in the back just like you would expect. It does not pop off. It is attached and we will drop in Luke here into his nicely confined X-Wing cockpit. Also, we can drop in R2 right behind him, classically so. Giving him a nice little jab with the finger. And so there they are inside. The bright orange rebel pilot suit and the little bit of the blue steel tone from R2 makes this vehicle pop. We've got landing gear that can retract in. A Little bit tricky to grab onto with these little clips, but it pops in and out and kind of hides seamlessly into the base of the X-Wing. Also, we've got a little pressure button here. I believe this should eject R2, maybe about the size of my pinky. Let's see if I can get my pinky in there and pop up R2 either slowly or can we do it quickly? Well, it's about the same either way. You might be able to really jab something in there and shoot him out with some practice. But we got him going pretty well. Let's check out the S-Foils, see if we can open them up to a traditional X-Wing look. There we go, sure. Those 
retract open and close really easily. So definitely a little more contracted than the original, a little more precision, preciseness with how the plastic is made now. The molding process tighter than ever, the painting process more realistic, and the Rebel technology closer to match these days. Pretty impressive what they can accomplish now at the micro scale. I guess the only missing detail would be an action stand. We have no display stand with these. The original action fleets that I used to collect all had a stand to place on your vehicle, which kind of gave them a nice little podium to show off with, making the X-Wing look afloat. So with these, you're going to have to just find a nice quiet shelf to landing gear on top of. Pretty good though, I like the evolution of what we have seen so far today. And for some people who still do not believe the terror of the Squixwing fighter, we never talk about the Death Star 3. Why don't we talk about the Death Star 3? Because the Squixwing fighter took out the Death Star 3 without anyone knowing it. Now we can go to the Giant of Micro, the Micro Galaxy Squadron Millennium Falcon Launch Edition. Number 22 from Jazzwares. This will certainly be fun to check out. A scaled Millennium Falcon, hopefully a little bit close to our X-Wing. Maybe shrunk down just a tad. For some strange reason, the Millennium Falcon in the 90s action fleet wasn't exactly represented right. We either had a small stumpied up version or there was a competing Micro Machines line Millennium Falcon that we kind of subbed in. But I don't believe there ever was a nice full scale Millennium Falcon to the collection so glad Micro Galaxy Squadron had this to the start. We've got lights and sound, we've got a crew of Han Solo, Princess Leia, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Chewbacca included. It is kind of odd and surprising they did not include a Luke Skywalker in regular dress, but that's what we have so far. Over on the back of the box, we've got details of our great Millennium Falcon, a cockpit that fits too many figures we've advanced, landing gear, lights and sounds, room to live in. So fun to behold, let's figure out how to get this box opened up. Wow, if you're careful and you can leave it in this plastic shell here, you've got an excellent display stand for a shelf. Look how it's kind of bobbing back and forth. I'm sure it will fall and destroy any crystal wear nearby. So let's continue and get this out of the plastic wrap bubble. And down goes this giant hamburger ship. Okay, that's not creepy at all, tabletop squirrel. Get your head out of there. So now out of the box, this pretty impressive scale Micro Squadron, Micro Galaxy Squadron Millennium Falcon. A couple small details to add, let's add on our dish. And our turbo laser for up top. We are currently all landed with gear down. And I have installed three AAA batteries inside. It runs off three AAA batteries in which you can fire up the back engines here a couple different ways. Well, the same way, pressing down these back circle vents for firing sounds with the turbo laser up top and then the engine noise down inside. We'll get to those a little more shortly. But wow, heavy on detail. That's what I'm noticing most about the Micro Galaxy Squadron. What we saw in the 90s just doesn't compare to what they can do today in plastic molding detail and paint. So let's open up our Falcon and see what is going on inside. We can lift from the sides here, I believe is the easiest way. And we can kind of remove our top panel. It hugs around the central turbo laser there. You can see how the vents here are placed right there and there, and then they are stationed right above the action feature buttons. So we can press these buttons again from inside. That is the loudest turbo laser noise, by the way. And our engine. Let's get our minifigures out too, so we can position them inside the ship. Four, again, come with the Millennium Falcon here. There's Han Solo, who looks a little Borgified. His face got a little bit muddy in the uh, painting process. And Princess Leia, she's looking okay. Leia's paint turned out a little better, although still looking kind of grumpy. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Weathered old man Obi-Wan Kenobi with hinged seating ability. And it's Chew, I want to pull the arms out of droids who beat me in chess, Baka. Oh, there goes Leia. It's not the exact floor plan of the Millennium Falcon by any means, but it's still nice to have several open rooms. 
We have the classic Star Wars de Jeric table. Am I saying that right? Chess table up front with the rounded seating area. We could have had maybe a more main computer area corner over here, but not exactly. It's a little bit tight in there. We have a back engine room area over here, and I believe we might be able to remove these storage compartments here by removing the decking. So yeah, we can hide some figures down below. We'll keep the princess nice and safe down there. And then a little hallway here to get inside. I believe this is going to lift up somehow. We're going to rotate. I think I see it rotate until it matches. And then there we go. We've got a little gunning station. We'll place uh, Chewbacca in there, maybe. It's actually pretty roomy in there, and these new micro figures actually have legs that are separated. In the old school 90s, they were often on bases, too. And so then we can place this back in as long as we rematch that correct notch piece with the turbo laser gun, and there we go, rotating it around and it is locked in. We should have an opening and closing entrance ramp to get in and out of the Millennium Falcon. So let's see, there it is right there, and we'll press down on these struts maybe, or maybe pull on this lever. Oh, sorry everybody, there it goes. It's a little bit tight at first. So we do have a landing ramp there. I think I may have just ajarred some landing gear. And then up front in the cockpit, we have room for how many? We actually have room for all four. I thought I just saw two on the back there, but we actually have four spots for the crew here that are all included. Of course, both Chewbacca and Princess Leia are now fairly occupied -o. So let's just place Obi-Wan back here. He can complain about, I don't know, his old knees or something. So close that up. Flipping over, checking out the landing gear. We've got giant ones in the back there that fold up and the front, and then one extra one up here. So plenty of stability there. And actually, it stands just fine flat too. And placing back down our cover, and we've got our Falcon ready for flight. If I can get this to snap in right, there we go. Pretty impressive, and we do have motion activated lights and sounds actually, and so they'll be a little squirrely with you. Again, the front middle one is that incredibly loud, very loud. Oh, I still haven't got it snapped down, the shell there. It's so incredibly loud. Gotta find out where the speaker's coming from so I could place my hand over it. Ah, there's the speaker. Put my fingers right there. Uh, so much less jarring. And then lights and sound activated. Get that engine going. It's a little squirrely. It likes to kind of compete with itself and draw other sound effects before one plays through, but pretty nice. And a nice, really glowy blue strip in the back for the engines. And a much more impressive scale size than what we had saw with the original 90s action fleet, but certainly not as much room. We had a back hatch here for some crew area and some storage. Same thing with a pop-up turbo laser and only one seating for Han Solo. But again, there was another option for Micro Machines for a larger scale, but with different scaled figures. It was just odd. I don't think they ever really got that one right. But now they did, so that's pretty fun. And this is a really cool Micro Galaxy Squadron ship. <laughs> Let's keep moving things classic. Next up, the TIE Fighter. Micro Galaxy Squadron version number 10. If you're picking up an X-Wing, you gotta pick up a TIE Fighter. These were the first two that I actually found from the launch edition. Series 1, there on the back of the box, an image of our TIE Fighter. Oh, it looks to be a cutout card if you wish to collect the various tech cards. Kind of a fun idea there. And of course, other vehicles available. These chase vehicles out there, very tricky. But they'll let you know on the box if you found one. So let's get this launch edition TIE Fighter out of pack. Nothing more satisfying than playing with an old school TIE Fighter, upside down TIE Fighter, there we go. Wow, this is very fragile feeling, so much more lightweight than what we saw from original Action Fleet. I have an original one somewhere around here, there we go, this one feeling a lot more robust. A little more bluish toned in the color of plastic too. We've got our TIE Pilot. Fairly detailed for its size and scale. Micro size and scale, a little bit of paintwork too going on his suit. And to get him inside, simply open up the top hatch there. 
and place inside. Jam in there, close up the top, and we're ready for flight. It feels a little more narrow too from what the original here was like, but I imagine this one is going to be closer to scale and how it really was because of the ability to replicate plastic modeling ships nowadays and pretty well balanced against the X-Wing here. That feels about appropriate scale, but boy do these both now feel very lightweight and fragile compared to the old. You wouldn't want to stack these up on each other, they might start popping joints and cracking seams. The old school was so solid. But we aren't talking about beating up our Micro Galaxy Squadron that bad, are we? They're high on detail, they're really quite cool. I like how the, the line work on the solar panel tie sides. How do you call them? I forgot what to call them. Well, the paneling on the side looks terrific. High detail with these, so lots of fun to behold. Now, it was heavily speculated for years that Emperor Palpatine tried to commission his own TIE Squix fighter, but yet the armament of this vehicle was too far of a reach. So if you're getting an X-Wing, don't forget to pick up a TIE fighter too. And you can make those cool noises. All right, moving along, let's bring in the impossible. The Micro Galaxy Squadron Chase Outland TIE Fighter with Moff Gideon. I honestly did not expect to ever find a Chase vehicle. You know they are chased by the one of rare 15,000 produced. Over on the back sometimes they will tell you what else is Chase. It looks like there is a Outland Chase Fighter X-Wing 2 perhaps, or whatever they're labeling it as. On the back here we see the foldable wings that Moff Gideon uses to land and get in and out of his TIE Fighter. Pretty rare this is. Obviously I can't really open it. I, I just couldn't do it. It's too rare. This is number 17. These do exist. I'm guessing it's going to be somewhat pretty similar to the TIE Fighter we just opened, only now we've got the foldable wings on each side. I have a feeling it's going to be very fragile feeling, just like what we had opened earlier, as these are much lighter weight, but still highly detailed. You can see a lot of TIE Fighter detail in there. There's Moff Gideon up a little bit closer. I have mixed feelings of Chase vehicle figures. I'm not the biggest fan of Chase stuff anymore. I really think that if you want a full collection, you should be able to get the full collection. I'm not sure what I'm doing with this yet, but it's going to be too hard to open at this moment. Before we do get to the Razor Crest, I have a couple mystery vehicle boxes. These are speeder bikes to look at. There are eight bikes to collect in series one, three of them, Chase. So I see a Scout Trooper Darth Maul, Ahsoka Tano, the Mandalorian, and a Scout Walker. I believe I see an IG-88 up in those chase vehicles, not sure what the other ones are yet. Now there does seem to be a code on the sides of these boxes. I don't know how accurate they are, if they will help out, but I will let you know which I've got as I open. So this box here is a SWJ0032 05162KX. If any of those numbers mean anything to you, maybe they will. Maybe they're just other kind of numbers, I'm not sure exactly yet. I only picked up a couple boxes. I wasn't too interested in picking up the full collection as these can get pretty spendy. They were running about $5.99, I think, for just one little box. And we're gonna start with the Mandalorian. Nice, he's got his little speeder bike, a little bit dusty Mandalorian. And unlike the larger ship Micro Galaxy Squadrons, we actually have a booger on the table. We actually have a little display stand. How does he sit on this bike, by the way? This is weird, as I keep rotating it around trying to find it. Is his cape going to be a problem? How is he gonna hold on to this? It's so micro. It's so micro! Anyhow, oh, his cape now has fallen off. Probably a warning label not to fly these with a cape. And so there he is, up close, pretty micro. Obviously, these little bikes are tiny, but I like how they included display stands with these. That helps out as these might very well get lost in shag carpeting. Ah! All right, so this box is SWJ0032052022 kx So if you see a box with that same exact code, maybe you'll get what I found. Kind of leave a note in the comments what you're thinking. Oh, we've got the little walker. Oops, as it drops. Is this one of the few clone vehicles? Most of the first series of Galaxy Squadron here are original trilogy, the uh, first set through four, five, and six. 
and then a little bit of Mandalorian afterwards. Although I believe there's a Obi-Wan Jedi Starfighter, but most items are episodes 4, 5, and 6, so kind of fun to see this guy today. And this one doesn't get a display stand because it just kind of walks around by itself. But pretty fun to see. Is it articulated, by the way? Do these legs move? These legs do move! Awesome! This is a nice little desk toy. And for our final Micro Galaxy Squadron vehicle of the day, it's the Razor Crest number 20 from Chazwares. With the Mandalorian himself that I can never say his name, Grief Karga, and Grogu. One of the benefits of a Micro Galaxy ship line is you can add more characters much easier than action figure size. This is a launch edition Razor Crest, so easily found available. I think I've seen this a couple times now at Walmart, and I picked mine up over on Amazon. Over on the back, we have a few details. We have a whole roof that opens up to look inside, a cockpit that does something 90 degrees, and a few other panels that open up and in. I could see this one being pretty popular right now, as Mandalorian is probably the most popular of Star Wars product right now. Let's open up and see this ship closer. Again, sort of like the Millennium Falcon, you can almost display these in the shells inside the boxes. They hold them up kind of nicely. This one even tighter than the Millennium Falcon. And out of package, the Razor Crest. I never really noticed the strange landing gear on this vehicle. We've got a front post and then these two sides that kind of swing in and under. Is that how it is portrayed on the show? I gotta watch closer. For some reason, they never noticed that, but they swing out and then a front post lands down. Another highly detailed Micro Galaxy Squadron ship, a nice gunmetal gray, almost with a metallic look and some yellow striping up front, also muddy and mechanical. We have our crew over here, let's get them out. There's Grief. The sculpt detail is absolutely incredible. I can almost recognize the actor there at this scale. The paint a little bit muddy. Mando, there's Mando looking good in his clean Beskar armor with a backpack and let's check him out with his bike. Woo! It's really windy over here when he's riding his bike, but you can see the two different styles of armor on him. And Grogu in his little pod. That might be the most micro scale of Grogu I've seen yet. Look how tiny that is. Does the pod remove? The pod does remove from display stand if you need to place them in the ship. So back to the Razor Crest, let's see if we can see a few more fun things. It would be awesome if it blew apart. Uh, we can remove the front hull, I believe, this top heavy section here somehow. Where do we grab on to remove this? I don't know. We've got a panel door right here we can open up. We'll start there, that's a nice way inside. And somehow these side panels are going to flip out too. If I can get my finger in there. Oh, and it just flies off and we can kind of peer inside. I doubt I did that exactly how you were supposed to. This back door should also open up, I believe. Gotta have some good fingernails right now. There we go. And I've got someone in Carbonite. I forgot this dude's name. But we have a poor fellow being transported in Carbonite. Nice little extra feature there. All sorts of surprises in here if I could figure out how to exactly open it. Now I know this top opens. It is tight though. There we go. Really clipped in there. Tried to get that from the top and now you can see the living quarters inside the Razor Crest. What is this? There's all these like moving details. Oh that's where you hide the Carbonite fellow. It's also micro and so hard to get into. I, I don't really know exactly how you're supposed to do this without having micro scaled fingers, but okay, so I got him inside there. If you can peer inside there, right behind this strut here, we've got him loaded in and now we can shut this door on this fellow. So that's quite the impressive storage hole inside this ship. It's a little tricky to get into. These panels are not wanting to pop open. But once you pop them out, you can kind of have a little environment to play in. As for the cockpit, this should open 90 degrees, right? There we go. And we can place Mando up front. And I believe maybe we can peg Grogu down. Yep, there's a little peg post on the bottom of Grogu's egg and we can just drop him right there into the back behind Mando and close up the shell. 
pretty nice. Do these cannons rotate, by the way? No. Does this front cover come off? There's something kind of interesting right there, almost. After everything else peeled off, it feels like more can. And let's get ready back for space flight. Closing this door, closing this back door here, dropping back down this top piece. I see two peg levers here. Those are probably going to go in first. So maybe the best way to open this is from the back next time. So instead of grabbing it here, sure. If you grab right back here, it should, in theory, in um, all purposes, in all sciences, in land sakes, it's stuck again. Oh no! So maybe open the side panel and then press down. Mine's really tight right now. Where is the side panel? This thing is a beast. All right, so we've got our Razor Crest back together, fold up our landing gear, and we're ready to fly on to our next little mission. Wait for me! Wait for me! It is rumored that the Mandalorian test flew Squick's fighter Razor Crests after the fall of the Empire to take advantage of the power vacuum after the fall. Their plan to cargo acorns across the galaxy and create a new highly desirable commodity of acorn trading fell through as the Squick's armor quickly ate the acorns inside. So what do you think about the Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron today? I think they turned out pretty well. A little bit fragile, but sculpted and painted so nicely done. If you liked today's video, please give us a squike, a squirrel eye, and a squamant on your favorite Micro Galaxy Squadron ships. A few more out there that I did not share today. I think there's a Slave 1, there's a little transport, troop transport. There are a few Clone Wars vehicles, so plenty to look for in Series 1. Thank you so much for watching today. That's what I have to say about that.